excited about the new stuff? Have you had a good show so far? Isn't it? Don't you want to go home and make something? I mean, isn't it like, oh, this stuff is so no sleep. You don't need to sleep. You don't need to do your laundry. And there's Taco Bell for food. All right. So new stamps and stencils that I have this time, of course, because this is the bread and butter of what we do. We gotta always have to have more. Never enough, right? So I took the birds from the very first release, and then I also took the two birds that came in that clear little Christmas set that was so popular and sold out so fast, and I shrunk them uh, so that they're good for cards and tags, because sometimes you, or you want more of them to appear, you want to do a whole family, or you want to do a mama and a baby, so you can do a big, big one from the first set and a little one. So more options with the birds, so little some birds that are smaller, okay? Um, a little known fact. For eight years, I was a demonstrator for a home-based stamping company, and I spent uh, my life making cards, cards, cards. And so I am a card maker, and I do identify with card makers, and I know how card makers think. And we like words to go with our cards, correct? So that's why this set is here. So a little bit of, of handwriting and sentiments, and then I wanted some of them not to be, I mean, I do have Merry Christmas in there, but I also have You Can Do Hard Things, um, I'm Here For You, You Did It, Yay, like a little bit different. Um, as well, happy everything, because I think that could be anniversary, I think it could be wedding, right? So this is uh, new for my card making. I'm going back to my roots with this release, as you will soon see. So card making roots as well. Uh, I did fellas, because I've got women, you gotta have the boys too, right? You gotta give the boys equal time. And I have three boys, so God had to have some fellas. Um, the, this one is also um, popular images shrunk down so that they're, so that they're more versatile. So that you have little bee, because the other bee was fantastic. I'm obsessed with that bee, but he doesn't fit on a flower because he's kind of big, <laughs> right? He's way out of proportion. So now look, there's a little bee that can go on the big flower from the other set, right? So isn't that kind of cool? Don't you love that, May? So, so cool. Oh, let's soul gaze too, May. We always look at each other. We're like, hello. We're soul sisters. Um, this set. I'm really in love with this this uh, funky journal shapes. Every single stamp in this set has a coordinating mask. So either the mask that came out with this release, so there's one set of masks from this release, or they came out in previous releases, okay? Uh, why bother having a stamp and a mask that match? What's the point? Why not, right? Because we can. <laughs> um, also, what, one of the uh, keys to making art, mixed media that doesn't get away from you is repetition. And I think sometimes people will start making stuff and they're like, I own 40 stamps, I'm gonna use them all. Uh, and then it, your piece, you don't know where to look and it gets away from you and, you know, uh, the number one thing missing in mixed media is restraint, including in my own work, because I am king and queen of overdoing. That's what I made a whole career of overdoing. But it's like Coco Chanel says, you know, you should get dressed for the night and put on your accessories and then take off two things. I think, mix, I think mixed media is a little bit like that. We, we, you know, maybe we shouldn't do the last two techniques. Uh, and maybe we should limit our focus a little bit. And so this means you can have backgrounds with the imagery and focal points with the imagery, and you can mix and match those shades and repeat them um, to make your piece really manageable. That makes sense? So masks and stamps that match. This little set, this is me, and this is Lady Diane Reebley. Uh, and I just think it's fun. Don't, can you just see her? Is that not her smile still? She's like... Uh, this, this is fun because I like to marry a vintage image with my, you know, explosion of color. I just think it's kind of fun to have that juxtaposition of, oh, you've got this kind of vintage looking image on <laughs> Dina's crazy colors. I, I like that. So that one's good fun for that reason. New stencils are here as well. Some of them are shrunk down from previous ones. Th this woman was popular, but someone said to me, you know, I can't put the, her on a tag. She's too big. I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so now they're smaller, so they'll fit on cards and tags. Um, also, this is like the greatest hits version. Um, these are all available in a larger form, and then now also smaller. And I find that the ones that have a lot or an assortment are on my desk constantly. Don't you find that to be true? Because you don't, you don't often use all six by nine inches of a stencil at once. Don't you find you use little and move it or, you know what I mean? So what's nice about this is you, there's a little bit there, you get just the stenciling you need and move on. You get, it's like three for one. Isn't that cool? Sure. You're like, whatever, like, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So the new media board, I'm just so excited about. So just like I was, 
or am a card maker, a stamper for many, many years. Um, started scrapbooking in 95. I started stamping in 96. Um, stamping got into my blood like, like a drug. Don't, did you guys feel that way when you discovered stamping? I mean, I just, I was an English major in college. I had boxes full of books in the garage. I'd run to the used bookstore and sell them. And then I would run to the stamp store and spend the cash. And my son was about one and a half or two, and he was super bratty. And, uh, and he was. And, uh, and so I would give him a sucker, and I'd put it on my shoulder so my hair was really sticky. Because he would be eating the sucker, like drooling on my hair. Uh, and a lollipop. Lolly. And, he, and, and I would hold his legs down with, with, with this. So he's on my shoulders, eating the lolly holding his legs and then I'm like, I have five minutes to buy stamps. <laughs> and so I would, anyway, I was, I was addicted. Uh, so that happened in 96 and then in 2005, I started really art journaling full force. I've done a little bit before that. So I've been art journaling for more than a decade. And back then when we started art journaling, there weren't great dilutions journals to buy. I mean, even moleskins you couldn't find. I mean, there, there was not that much to use. And so we were making our own. And so I learned bookbinding. And I, and I come from a bookbinding background. I, there's something so satisfying about taking flat blank pieces of paper and ending up with a book. And so that's why this is so awesome. Because it's a great cover and foundation to make book projects and that sort of thing. And as a store owner, it's really nice because sometimes you're like, you know, somebody will say, oh, I want chipboard for a book and then they all run to the dollar store and buy cereal boxes or something. This is something in your shop that you can point people to, that this completes the project and we're not sending people away to buy chipboard some, in some other source. Does that make sense? Um, one side has a canvas, uh, yeah, to fondle, please. Uh, one side has a canvas uh, finish, or is canvas, it is canvas ad adhered. It is primed. Um, Anything primed in a factory is not good enough for Dina. So I would always put another coat of gesso on, but I would probably call it gesso optional because it does have a thin factory given primer. Um, one side is just a paper backing. Now that said, that paper backing, which probably is not intended to be <laughs> painted, I painted. Tim said, of course you did. Of course you painted the back. Because <laughs> here's a little board book that I made. Um, I just cut the 9 by 12 sheets in quarters and did the board book. And so some of it's the canvas and some of it's the smooth back. And you really can't tell as you're flipping through. I mean, once your uh, project is decorated completely, um, um, it's just a great little board book. So that's the 9 by 12 boards cut into quarters, painted, zhuzhed up however you want, and then um, made into a book. And then this one is just a little accordion book with the canvas part sticking out, and it just gives a great texture um, for your for your projects. So if you were in my CHA class, this is what we made. Great little wall hanging, cute, fun. P punch it with a crocodile. The board punches like easy with a crocodile. Um, unlike canvas boards that you buy at the art store that are wrapped, you know, paper backed, you know, um, this can you can be cut. Uh, so not really with a paper trimmer, but with a guillotine cutter or a knife and a ruler, you can easily cut this for any sort of size projects that you want it to be. So for me, this is just like, oh, I can make all these little books and this can be the cover and I can do assemblage layered pieces and I'm just so, so excited about it. It was also the foundation for our designer challenge. So it doesn't warp. I mean, you can throw all kinds of stuff on it. It, it stands up to it. Um, these are my new six new colors. So I'm so excited about the colors that are new in the line. Many of the colors from that we had before have been very similar in value. I chose them that way on purpose so they would blend well. Value just means kind of like intensity. So pastels all have the same value. Jewel tones all have the same value. That makes sense? So this adds more deeper values to the line, which I really think help, help rounds it out. And I'm just obsessed with them. I just, I love them. That painting, that 24 inch abstract I did, it's all the new colors except for two. I added sky blue to that painting and I added white. Um, the rest is, are the new, is the new stuff. That's the first thing I made when the samples came in the mail. I was like, oh, 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 oh. And it has the great consistency that all Dina Wake the Media paint has. It's the heavy body paint that will hold structure, but it can be thinned down to be watercolor. So look at this. Artist friend of mine uh, from Maine made this. It, it came and I was like, oh my gosh, look how it looks truly like watercolor. She even did the, the wet technique where you splatter it while it's wet, wet on wet, and get the, te get the texture in there. This is my acrylic. 
So what, what I love about that is that it's my acrylic that doesn't lose pigmentation when a little bit of water, it's not gonna break and end up like weird watery paint water. It's still gonna look like paint, um, just thin and a little more transparent. So I think it's so versatile, it's the best of both worlds. It can be thick and impasto like that now, and then it can be thin, like watercolor, and I mean, how versatile is that? I mean, so, so versatile. I love this too. So I, I told her she's never getting rid of me, she's gonna help me all the time. So on this board, what I did is I took gesso and I took the paint combs that came out in the last release and I just kind of made a few marks. You can kind of see there's a few textury bits in that on the gesso. You can see a little bit. And what I like to do is I start with a little paint and if I put it on thick, the great thing about the paint is that, let me see if I'm wiping it on my outfit, uh, it will remain thick because of the body of the paint. So nice and thick. Uh, paint and it. I mean, oh dear. <coughs> <laughs> Tim's like, why are you a mess? I'm like, I don't know. Um, I can take the end of a brush and I could scribble and write in that. Okay, and it would dry like that. Working out a little water. Amazing things happen. Turns watery and watercolor. So I like to. I like to leave half of it thick, and then I like to blend out the edge and let it feather out that direction so that I've got both thick and thin in the very same piece. And it just makes for an interesting piece. That painter is how I did that. If you, if you get closer to it, one side is really thick and then you can see it thin out as it goes across the wave, yeah? Now the mica sprays, everybody uses these a little differently. You know, they're a solid mica in a binder. You know, if you spray them on a tag, often you think, oh, I ruined that tag. <laughs> because when you spray the mica on the tag, Um, really the binder shows up, thank you, and you think, oh, I don't know about that. When it's dry, when that binder's evaporated, it's going to look pearlescent, and that's when the magic really happens. Thank you. Um, now, blue and red make purple, except these are solids. The mica solids don't mix, really, but the light will bounce off all those solids, and our, it will look purple to our eyes a little bit, and so I've been addicted to using them together, of course, because can I use them the usual way? No. In fact, I've been so upset with these, Patty keeps having to send more. <laughs> Can you make this? No, I have no more mic I need to do anymore because <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> and I don't just sprinkle a little, I puddle this stuff. All right, so I'm going to spray into the wet layer that I just made. And what's going to happen is those mica solids are going to float around there in that puddle. And then when they're dry, they are going to look amazing. Let me find one that's super mica -y. That one's not were fondling them earlier. That's not the one I'm looking for though. La, la, la. Okay. Yes. Can you see the mic on that? Yes. See how there's just a little section that's pearlescent? And that tends to be how I would like to use it. I don't necessarily want the whole thing to be covered, but I want it to flow in my layers. And doesn't that give it an interesting quality? I just think it's gorgeous. And you can see the texture of the gesso poking through. Because as soon as I wet my paint, it's gonna roll away from anything high. So all the, ges the, the gesso that's textured and high, it will roll away from. And so it's gonna pop out. That makes sense? There's a price to pay for that, and that price is time. Now it has to dry. People always say, how long, is it gonna ta how long does your paint take to dry? And I always say, where do you live? And how is your relative humidity? You know, do you leave your fan on? And I don't know. It, it, it takes it takes what it takes. Um, I'm not a big believer in heating my paint with a heat tool. Uh, acrylic paint is plastic, and you know, yeah, it'll bubble and release a few fumes. So probably not. Just let it air dry. While one thing is dry, move to something else. Start stamping. You know, if that's going to be my background, I'd move and I would start stamping and coloring for my focal point. That makes sense. So in a class, I do the same thing. I'll have people make wet backgrounds. We set them aside. And then we work on the focal points or other elements of the project. Because I, if I hear a heat tool, I'm like, who's heating something? <laughs> Turn it off. Um, heat tools are wonderful for ink, but they're not the best for my yeah, my. Thank you. Uh, now she distracts me. Heat tools are the best. Yeah. Good, good stuff. So I did the mic at, oh, the ink pad. These are the new ink pads. Where's the one that has the real Layla? Here we go. This is my prototype pad. 
So these are new for all of us. I'm sure everybody's talked about their ink pad, right? So the colors that I chose are Tangerine, Ruby, Ocean, and Night. Hallelujah, the angels sing. So Night is my favorite, favorite neutral. You might say, why would Night be a neutral? It's navy blue. I'm gonna write an essay called Why Dina Believes Blue is a Neutral. <laughs> because your jeans are blue, what, what shirt matches your jeans? Everything, the sky's blue. What looks good against the sky? Everything. I, I really do think you, I could make an argument that blue is a neutral. I really do. And so night is my most used dark neutrals. I, I, my first paint line first came out. I didn't even have black paint in the line because I use night. Night is my the dark color of choice for me. It's a little less harsh than black. And so I, you know I had to have night ink. Um, and they, it just gives you kind of a different little look if you stamp with the night. It's just, you know, it's just fun. It's the new black. Night is the new black. Uh, so super excited about this as well. Um, you can see that uh, incorporating in many ways. And of course, archival ink is the best. It works on acrylic. So, you know, it's a little oily, dries on acrylic, permanent on acrylic. You know, people say, how are you stamping on that? Archival. You don't need any other ink. Archival is, well, you do need to stress for, for regular paper. But archival on acrylic is what you need. It's absolutely wonderful. Anyone have questions?